Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another build review, if you want to call it that, of another model kit. And as you can see, I am going back to my First World War area. Well, era? Area? Where did you get that from? I don't know. Okay, so this is the main sprue. Not paint, well, not painted. Uh, this has all been washed and looks absolutely beautiful now. Got all that crap off, if you want to call it. Anyway, we're going to do the very first thing that every first world aircraft needs the wood effect now most modelers use oil paint and as oil paint takes a longer time to dry I am going to add it now the one thing being an artist well no uh, being a painter as much as me with my canvases and that lot as you most of you probably know oil paint when absorbed it does take at least a week to fully dry and so for this it will take about a week to fully dry so this is why I'm doing it now because while this is drying I can get on with some other things that are kind of um, important I don't know I don't know really but anyway so this is good on technique uh, I'm using just an old brush I've got some paint I'm using um, a little spot of burnt sienna that's from the uh, Dela and Rowney uh, Georgian oil collection which I have so just a touch here I'm just going to thin down just a touch uh, hmm. I'm just a bit concerned about whether that is too dark so let's just have a look I'm just going to paint the floor of this model Actually, that does not look too bad. Don't you see there? The floor is actually made of wood, but it's moulded in two halves. Which is going to be a pin. So, paint the floor there. Some wood effect. More like so. Sorry, I do get very, very quiet when I'm concentrating. Sorry. So just like that, painted it in the oils, like so. It's a nice dark oak colour, like that, but that will dry up and make a very nice colour. So... Like so. Time for the other side. Like so, the same again. Like so, same again. Paint all it all up the wood grain effect. Now, one thing about oils is that it has such a slow drying time, but when it turns out, it looks absolutely brilliant. So this is why I'm doing this now, so my patience doesn't wear off. Best thing to do, if you do get a bit annoyed, just thin it down just a touch more, but not too much so it doesn't come absorbent. Like 
works. So. that. So that is now all properly done. So it's a long process but there you go. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to go and complete the other parts which is probably the seats and all the struts probably. And we'll get this completed. Okay back again. A uh, bit different this time, as you can tell. What it was, I after it's it's been over a week. It's been about three weeks since I've touched this model, basically, and everything is completely dry. All the oils are dry, so you have nice uh, grain work in all those beautiful textures. So we can see. Give me a second. Doing this piece here. I don't know if we can see that at all or not, but. There we are. So as you can see, um, I went away and painted the middle parts so here with the paint I'm using, which is uh, it's, it's called it's a deck tan. It's um, Tamiya XF55. Now apparently that's the nicest color you go get to a uh, First World War. It's the type of beige color it was. In all fairness, guys, I can't remember the exact name or. I'm just going to call it linen because it's what's, that's what it's telling me. Okay, so it's all painted inside there, and that's how it turned out. That's had two coats, and it does look really beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a nice thin brush here. It's going to, sounds like um, something, but yeah, I'm just going to just jet, go ahead between these. Uh, small lines and paint, uh, well, hand brush paint the, um, the parts in the middle. Now, I bet you're thinking, why did I not just paint the linen parts first and then the wood grain? Well, to be honest, I'd rather paint that first because that's going to take a bit longer to dry than the actual woodwork and if so I could just go over the top and it would be much easier for me painting and blah 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 so you really do have to kind of be careful around here now special hobby do actually give you a very nice touch for this I can actually uh, do that just gotta be careful that you're not going over the wood grain parts and the panels here. Turn you around a bit. I'm sorry if you're out of shot but I can't really multitask. Now what I've also done with this Tamiya paint is I've thinned it down just a touch. I always kind of do with Tamiya paint. I don't know why I always do. I don't know whether any of you guys you do that but there we go. So just painting the inside of here it's just it's a very nice colour I have to admit this deck tan I actually actually had to go and buy some it was the only kind of colour I did not have in my whole paint range and so that kind of shocked me because normally and I, I don't have every single paint in the world no one has every single paint in the world but I actually had to go and get some I actually took quite a while of research to actually try and find what the exact colour was for First World War aircraft and this type of camouflage so it was it's linen but this was kind of the only closest thing either that it was Humbrol 74 which I don't fancy using in all fairness after my experiences with Humbrol sorry to say but there we go so that's careful that's dry and now what I also do is I paint this back part as well because there was kind of no 
back plate at the back here I don't think so that's just going to be covered over for now uh, can I show carry that on a bit forward on the wood grain there on the floor hopefully no one will see that just me and you like so Go over some areas here. Yeah, I don't know if we can see. Sorry about shot. I do apologise. But that's really it. So now all we have to do is just let it dry. And of course, you know what that means, don't you? Just let it dry. It's like watching paint dry. That's what they always say. As you can tell, a lot has changed since this little thing started. Side walls being cut out and. That is now just sat there. I've got the side walls all painted up from the wood uh, surface. They were painted in the oils to make the wood grain effects. The floors, the sides here. The other sides, the canvas colour, that's painted in linen. That's XF55, I believe. It's a, te it's a tan colour from Tamiya. And all the other metal parts are supposed to be in a greyish blue, but I have used um, Tamiya XF12 JN Grey, and it's made a nice colour of it. So there we go. So the other colours that we, what colours, other parts we need to add are very simple. We have two seats, armoured plates, well, I don't know if it's armoured plate, firewall, whichever, a seat rest, piece of wood, piece of metal, and last but not least we have most importantly rudder pedals and the yoke control stick and there you have it that is seriously all we need now if you build this kit you do have to take notes when making the cockpit you have to uh, look at which versions you're going to make now that just said I'm going to build the RNAS version which is still in the French schemes the only difference is that naturally it's a different squadron one, it's British, and two, it has the Lewis gun fixed on top. Now, for some reasons unknown, and it says in here that for that version you have to create um, a different um, piece for it. I have no idea, well, different piece, I mean different positioning. Now, the reason being is that the control sticks here should go on here. That's if you're making the French or the Belgian version, which is correct there. But then for the British RNAS version, is it? Yeah, RNAS, um, Royal, Naval, Royal Naval Air Service. For some reason, these get put here. So, instead of being a front uh, controller, it is now... Um, a rear controller for some reason now naturally with the Lewis gun on top I don't think you're able to fire through that but still there you go so I don't know how that works but as you can tell from the instructions there Lewis gun on top and for some reasons one guy sat in the front did nothing while the guy at the back turned and shooted at the same time it wouldn't make sense if it was the Belgian version, steer in the front and a guy shoot on top. Perhaps it would be quite difficult because you couldn't get a good shot on it if you keep the airplane still. But anyhow, your one the French version is a spotter. I have no idea why. Newport aircraft are so confusing. But anyway, I said I was going to make the British version. So what we are going to do to take note from the instructions and we are simply going to follow what it simply says so can I take some glue, I'm using a different kind of glue today and um, just to get some on thin areas if it will work come on at the end you come out the end don't think anyone wants to come out the end
Nah. Sometimes that's why I'm not really keen on the Revel contact fillers because they always, always block up quite a bit. And I want to get thick because of. Nah, I don't know. Oh, there we go, we have life. There we go. Let's get some tissue paper and wipe that off. Some on the end there, like so. Like that. For the pedals. Uh, going there apparently for some reason. No, that's not going to stay on. It's one of the parts where you glue it on and it doesn't want to stay. Right, okay, uh, we're going to do the other glue, which is this. Now, I won't recommend it because it is such a strong, strong glue. Seriously, guys, this is really, actually, really not bad glue. It is called Super Stick, is it? Yeah, Super Stick, Super Glue, naturally. And yes, it is a very, very good glue. The trouble is, you have to get in position because once that's in position, it will not come off. So that's why I'm doing it just for these smaller detail parts, like here. So here we go. Just touch on the end here. That's all we need. Touch. Thank you very much. Touch on. Need to fall over in the process. That's the only problem. Right. Three, two, one. go and there we have it that is in place stuck completely down there we have it so that is just left to dry now no problem whatsoever blimey tensions all, <laughs> all over tensions okay so what's next on the agenda so apparently that needs to fit onto there now for some reason. Um just having a look. Okay. So apparently that fits on to there. What I can tell. Um, does it really? Hmm. So apparently that's supposed to fit there. I f believe not. I think that's going to go there. Like so. Blimey. Tensions already. Okay, so finally, before we stifle, let's finally do the seats. Okay, so there's apparently there's a little lip on the underside. I'll show you in a minute once I've done this one. Let's turn it over. Yeah, that's on the lip like so. We go pull it across. No, like so. Right, 
Right. Blimey. And that, to see there's, I can't do see only if there's a tiny little lip that's supposed to slot in front of this, like that, for reasons unknown to man. Put on the other side there. This is the tricky part, trying to get everything into place because it's such a tiny little model. Oh that is in place like that. Okay. Okay, that's in place like so. Get that moved across a bit more. This can actually like so. Not too much though. And there we have it. Right. <sighs> Breathe again now. Blimey. That was a lot of work to do for that little cockpit, but it is worth it. Look at that little detail. It looks superb. Wowie. Right, so, just make sure everything's level. And then once that's done, we'll let it dry. And then, we'll put the two fuselage halves together. I think I need to make myself a drink after that part. Okay, so a lot different than what you last saw it. Uh, wings are on, stabiliser and the elevators are on. A uh, bit of fiddly quite less guys. The two wings at the bottom there are very tricky. Sanding consisted all the way down here, so a lot of sanding is needed. Then there's a bit of filler there, and there, and there, and a bit there. And that is literally how it is guys, it is just a tiny little pain basically, a bit like a, <sighs> I don't know. Anyway, painting, uh, actually I'm doing the uh, the linen colour, which is like a, a beige yellow type colour. If you're using Humbrol, you use uh, Humbrol 71, from then on you can help yourself, but for Tamiya, I'm using XF55, which is deck tan. Now... We can have a go at this, so we just have this spray thin down. Oh, um, okay, a lot different. Hmm. Right, let's give it one light coat over the top. Very light coat. So it turns out, well, it looks a nice colour, but again, don't know what it's like until it's actually properly fully dry, do we? So just give it a nice first coat to start off with. Across the top wing here, most important. Now Newport's wings are actually very weird to that extent. But that's what gave them such a fashion really, I suppose. And yeah, they kind of swept back, but yet different size. See the size of the top one compared to the bottom ones. That was always weird how that was occurring. Hmm. Oh well, that's how a new port's aircraft was designed. So therefore, that's how it was. Hmm. Actually, pick this up and have a look.
Mm. I think that top bit needs sanding out the top there. Oh well, I'll have to do that afterwards and give another respray across. So, first coat. There we go. And now it's a simple lesson of letting everything dry, which again is a hassle. So, I'll go away, give this a couple of paints, well, coats, sorry. I shall see you all later.